course, a star chamber to discuss probably not all of this. We haven't got time, but at least some of it. I'm joined now by Liberal MP Tony Smith and Labor's Nick Champion. Gentlemen, thanks very much for being there. Let me go to you first, Tony thanks, Smith. Peter. Now, you are a former senior advisor to Peter Costello. He famously brought in the GST. We all know we need to do something about the GST. Members of the executive on both sides, it has to be said, run from this issue. Come on, give us some powerful comment from the backbench. Would you like to see change to the GST? I'm going to disappoint you, Peter. Oh. No, I completely agree with Joe Hockey on this. And I was there when the GST was introduced. It was introduced uh, at a rate of 10 per cent. And uh, it made up for 50 years of um, necessary change. And I think there should be a greater focus on spending. This idea okay, that... But, we can, you can walk and chew gum at, but you can walk and chew gum at the same time. Let's assume no, that there'll be Peter, some focus my, my on spending. Is. Can't you also do something with the GST? Everybody says that we need to do it, except the politicians. And unfortunately, you're the lot that gets to make the decisions. No, well, we made a commitment before the election. Joe's reiterated that today. Look, it is not on our mind. And every time, every time there's a spending problem, people say, increase some taxes. I mean, the GST was introduced, it goes to the states. And what I think we should be focusing on is the quality of our spending in the budget. It's about $400 billion. All right, and we, we... there's just this assumption that uh, that can't be analysed. But of course, that's precisely what the Commission of Audit's about. And. Uh, and the May budget will be. Well, it would be nice to get a look at that Commission of Order, but maybe we'll get to that in a moment. Let me bring you in, Nick Champion. Now, you're prepared to give your party the two-finger salute on the carbon tax. Uh, you said it should be repealed. You've walked away from that, of course. How about giving me something on the GST? What do you reckon? The GST, if not increase it, what about broadening it so that the tax base can get to where really senior bureaucrats say it needs to get? People like Parkinson and Stevens. Uh, these are not small men in the world of economics. Well, look, uh, I uh, joined the Labor Party to oppose uh, regressive taxation in the form of the first uh, GST proposal that uh, John Hewson put up, and I'll go to my grave uh, uh, refusing to agree with regressive taxation. If you expand the GST, you're taxing the poor uh, much more harshly than you're taxing... But you can fix that on the spending side, Nick Champion. No, well, no, you can't. With you can't. all that it's revenue that comes flooding in from no, the GST. No, it's in, uh, well, no, Peter, it's an inherently regressive tax. And if you look around the world where uh, GSTs have been introduced and increased, it is the poor and the middle class that end up shouldering uh, the revenue burden. And that is not fair and not the sort of society that we want to uh, embrace. You call, we don't you, want, Nick uh, Champion, you calling it a regressive tax is a nice way for me to go back to Tony Smith and get tax. him to defend it's the GST. Inherently That's regressive. more than seems to be going on elsewhere at the moment. Tony well, Smith, no, jump to the defence of the GST for me. Is it a regressive tax? Well, I'm going to make a couple of points. Um, uh, you know, Nick says all of that, but uh, for his whole time in government, he was happy to accept uh, the 10% GST that we brought in back in uh, 2000. Uh, he was more than happy to, to well, accept it. It's like trying it, to unscramble so. an egg, isn't it? You can't, uh, you can't do anything about it once it's in. Well, look, Nick, uh, Nick didn't voice uh, his views when he was in government. That's the point I'm making. But the other point I make to you, Peter, is this issue comes up uh, sure, uh, it's a popular view in the business community and Martin Parkinson made some comments last night. But I'd point out to you, I mean, when we were in government, after we got a Senate majority, uh, we did a number of things. We did work choices and we've spoken about that on previous programs. We never sought to change the GST. What we sought to do back in 2000 was bring in an overdue reform. So you wouldn't even support it, Tony Smith, in the aftermath of this election? You would, you would be disappointed in your party if it took GST reform to the next election, a little bit like what the Howard Costello government did in 98? Look, my perspective on this is we did a major reform back in 2000. The biggest issue now is the quality of spending uh, within the budget. And I think the Commission of Audit and our first budget, that's where the focus should be. Every time there's an argument about spending, there's this knee-jerk reaction that we've got to mm. increase taxes. I just don't subscribe to it. All right, Nick Champion, let me come to you. Uh, one thing that Martin Parkinson in his speech really did do is he slapped down this suggestion that came from Chris Bowen that uh, the budget could be brought back to surplus within five years. Martin Parkinson basically said, and he used kinder words than I am now, but he just said that was a ridiculous proposition. Your response? 
Well, obviously we don't agree, but uh, look, if uh, the Liberal Party want to talk about spending, I'll give them a couple of saves right off the right off the bat. They can get rid of direct action, which no sensible economist thinks will work, that will work. Uh, it's an un uh, you know, an oh, unscientific on, I think you were saying this this morning thing, when I was having a cup of coffee. And, and, <laughs> and the second thing, and the second thing they can get rid of is paying people $75,000 a year to have babies. I mean, uh, we're now subsidising high income earners to, to have babies in this country. So if you're going to talk well, I, about sure spending, if you're going to be beat your chest about internal it, issues then you should, cut, you should actually cut it. But what about on your side, though? I mean, you, you, you've sidestepped the question about Chris Bowen, uh, he's saying that you can bring the budget back to surplus in five years. Even Martin Parkinson is now saying that's just impossible uh, without massive changes to cut spending. Uh, you guys don't exactly have a great track record when it comes to predicting bringing the budget back to surplus. Who do we believe, Chris Bowen or, uh, or Martin Parkinson? Well, look, I don't think it's a question of believing individuals. I mean, what we've found uh, since the global financial crisis and governments around the world have had to uh, struggle with this is that nearly all of the economic um, assumptions that underpin budgets uh, have begun to change very, uh, uh, you know, greatly in what is a volatile economic environment. And I don't think you can blame uh, bureaucrats or politicians for that. Uh, it is just a, a, a mech, you know, a matter mm. of the times we live in. So I mean, we have to be sensible about these things. Um, I'm confident that Australia can bring the budget back to surplus, but budgets are about priorities, Peter, and uh, yep. this government's got the wrong priorities. <laughs> and we will get a look soon enough in May. Uh, we're almost out of time, gentlemen, but Tony Smith, let me just ask you about the WA poll. Are you worried uh, that, uh, that the Liberals might not pick up the three senators that it did win, irrespective of the dispute uh, that went on between Labor, Palmer United and Greens? Oh, well, look, it's a, it's a tough challenge for us over there. You're right, uh, on any count uh, in the original election, we won three. This is a, a by-election. Uh, there are no House of Reps elections, and we don't know what turnout will be, and uh, it's, it's a very big ask. But, uh, of course, uh, today um, we had uh, some other news there from uh, West Australia that will, of course, dismay voters with that uh, issue at the pre-poll centre. Mm. And, oh, that's uh, unbelievable. And you, you, of course, chair the Electoral Affairs Committee. I mean, you must just be shaking your head. Well, as I said, voters are, are rightly dis dismayed. I mean, the saving grace is all of those people can vote again, but it does go to the importance of culture within the, the AEC, and that's why mm -hmm. the committee uh, really requested the Auditor-General to be in there, and the Auditor-General Auditor is in there. Uh, but, uh, Still didn't save the situation, Tony Smith. I'm looking forward to your no. report on, on, on all of this uh, whenever that comes out. We'll come back to you on that in a while. But i just got to quickly ask you, Nick Champion, before we lose you, um, not very helpful for the Labor campaign come Saturday uh, to have your lead Senate candidate uh, have it revealed uh, that he had an assault conviction, I think it was, Joe Bullock, uh, which he hadn't disclosed to his own party before becoming the number one candidate. Not helpful at all. Well, I don't know anything about it, uh, Peter. So, oh, how um, convenient! Uh, you, you know, uh, haven't, <laughs> the haven't, haven't seen, seen the note no on evil. it. Haven't seen the <laughs> haven't seen the the brief on it. No, I truly haven't. Um, but look, you know, um, when you're a candidate, uh, everybody gets a good look at you, um, and I guess they make uh, you know decisions accordingly. But well, I couldn't comment on this matter. <laughs> all right, you you are well briefed if you ever have to front the ICAC inquiry. Nick Champion and Tony Smith, <laughs> Cheers, we're mate. out of time. Thanks both of you very much. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Nick.